Something nudged my shoulder. This is a really freaky place. Dark shadows, ghostly footsteps and haunted artefacts await the crew at the Muckleborough Museum. There's something going on here. is situated in Weybourne, Norfolk. Weybourne has always been a military village. It has been a base for large numbers of troops during the wars of 1588, 1914 and 1938. The collection was started by Berry Savory and his son Michael. Together they have allowed thousands of people to remember the brave soldiers who fought so gallantly for our country. The museum has become famous not just for its memorabilia but also for its ghost sightings. The area around here is full of natural harbours and because of that it's always been a defended position because these harbours of course bring invaders, the Romans, the Saxons and they believe that also Vikings landed here on this very spot. So there's always been soldiers, camps around here. Dark shadows have been experienced in this room, along with the feeling of being watched, which has been reported by staff members. These occurrences happen both in the day and at night. The shadows are more prolific in the winter um, because there is nobody around. And although you know, people say it could be the wind, it isn't. You can feel the rush of something by you or you know, a sudden cold spot, you can feel it. With there being a, um, a military camp here, of course, there's been a phenomenal amount of life and death. Six ATS women were killed here when an anti-aircraft gun blew up. Nobody really knows whether, of course, they found all of them. There was a, quite a sinister tale attached to this camp. We've got to be rather careful about this. We know the names of the people involved, but we don't want to offend any living relatives. But according to newspaper cuttings that we found in the archive, should I say there was a suspicious death here, and it involved a Royal Artillery Sergeant. A case where his, there was a suspicious death of his wife. Uh, he returned to his home for on some leave. There was a large trunk. It was opened, and her body was found inside the trunk. This desk and chair was Berry Savory's, and the present employees refuse to sit here because it's always icy cold and has an eerie feeling. And the resident dog, Holly, won't come anywhere near it. Another strange thing that's happened in this office is that Berry Savory used to have a beautiful picture up here on the wall. It was his favourite. Now, the current manager then took down that photograph and replaced it with a new one. As soon as the new one went up, it crashed down with no logical explanation. Berry loved this place with a passion. He spent almost 24 hours here every day, every single day of his last few years, and he loved it. And I know that he is still here, definitely. He flew with no less than Douglas Barder. This is squadron leader Berry Savory's hat. There's his scrapbooks, there's everything to do with him here. And people believe that because he loved this place so much, this place that he set up, that he still visits. He still comes back to this place to oversee what's going on. Well, 
All of these now retired vehicles have all seen action, but in the dead of night, strange noises can be heard coming from within. Voices of soldiers have been heard coming from inside this tank, and cries of anguish have been heard coming from here. People have claimed that they've heard moans and groans from the rear of the ambulance, for example. The tanks, uh, various tanks have been heard to be cooling down. People will say, well, oh, have you had this one out today? Is it going to be out again? And maybe it hasn't been moved for a month. The biggest thing of all, in my opinion, is the fact that this place is absolutely chock-a-block with fighting vehicles. People have spent many, many hours in combat inside these vehicles. The emotion that must be, I think, recorded into those vehicles, they, they hold the memories from those soldiers. Having spent time getting to know the layout of the museum and also listening to various eyewitness accounts of ghost sightings, Phil Wyman, our paranormal investigator, felt sure we were in for an interesting night. Do you think tanks and planes can mm. actually hold on to the memories and almost replay them? Well, if you go along with the idea of the stone tape theory, which basically means any object can absorb energies from a past era, for instance, and then replay them under certain circumstances, then I, I think that's quite possible, yes. Do you think it's a bit strange that the resident dog, Holly, won't go near Barry Savory's desk, or in fact any of the residents here don't like it? I think it's strange, but it's not too uncommon, actually, with animals. If they associate, perhaps, paranormal activity with a certain area, they tend to stay out of that area. What about the picture as well that apparently fell off the wall? That's quite interesting. Well, as far as pictures coming off the wall are concerned, um, personally, for me, it doesn't really represent um, any kind of paranormal activity, they fall off walls all the time, nails come out the wall for instance. Having said that, this picture was on a picture hook, which means that it would have had to have been lifted up, pulled off the wall and placed on the floor. So uh, it's a bit of a strange one. Museums are interesting at the best of times, but once daylight has gone and visitors have left, the whole building takes on a different feel. With our locked-off cameras in position and our trigger object set, the crew were ready to start the investigation. We needed one last person to join us. We called on the help of psychic Derek Akora. Here, directly in front of us, it's like there's a yearning, both a psychic and spiritual yearning, to go to this area of this tank. I, I seem to get a lot of spiritual activity taking place around this tank. Now, when this activity is taking place, it can only be produced by a spirit person, mm -hmm. not residual energy. The place here is stacked in a lot of residual energy, different layers. Mm -hmm. But here, I feel as if there's a great deal of, with this particular tank, and, and seems to be centered here, it seems to be going from that area over to here. So, in this area alone, I feel if someone was actually walking or tending something, walked into this hangar, mm. they would probably be met by noises, without a doubt, because this individual man would make the noise. Um, I know it most definitely is an American soul, he's not English, mm -hmm. and most definitely he would be uh, very strongly linked here. Um, is he a, a benign spirit or is there any sort of <clears throat> nastiness about him? No, there's nothing nasty about this person. However, this passageway here, which right. is most interesting, okay, mm -hmm. Let's assume, psychically, that he, apart from doing what he does in this hangar, and we go out to that passageway, what I want to say about the, pa thank you, Sam, passageway, it seems as if I get this noise, and it's purposely done this way, and Sam's, you know, given it to me. It's like a, um, not a hissing, but like a uh, sound, mm. and up and down this passageway at times. And, through different parts of the actual building. And that's done deliberately? You that's done deliberately.